Good afternoon, hello. My name is Daniel. This is the Triathlon Dan YouTube channel. Now, if you've watched this channel for a long time, you'll probably be thinking, shock, he's bought a canyon. Yes, I know. Fan of the brand, let me off, okay? But I'm going to explain to you in this video why I've bought this bike, what it is, and why I think it's the perfect training bike for me after I've made a couple of key changes. So I've ridden bikes for around 10 years or so now, and in 2016, I bought my first proper road bike. It was a Canyon Endurace, rim brake, carbon frame, DI2, it was the absolute dream and I still have that bike and still ride it to this day. I started racing in the last two or three years, crit races, road races, that sort of thing. So I kept an eye out for a Canyon Aeroad, which was you know, aerodynamic, more aggressive position, faster, all the marketing buzzwords you can imagine. Got one of those, absolutely love it. I tend to do a lot of my training on the Endure Race and a lot of racing and like club chain gangs on the Aeroad. And they both serve those different purposes really, really well. I don't want to be chewing through expensive components on tra you know, training rides. So I use the Endure Race with a, you know, Ultegra group set and like a you know, years old equipment and the aero I keep a bit more up to date and a bit more pristine condition for racing where performance really matters but when I was flitting between the two bikes I'd perhaps ride the, the enduro race on a Sunday and then do a fast club ride on a Wednesday on the aero I'm finding it more and more difficult to adjust between the two positions it, the handling feels different on the bike the position feels different they're both comfortable when I get used to them but it just it was just becoming a bit like oh this feels different again I thought there's something missing here I think my training bike can be closer to the position of the race bike, but while still keeping those those things that I thought were important, the you know the cheaper components and the you know tire clearance and those sorts of things. So that's where this comes in. This is the Ultimate CFSL. The Ultimate is actually classed as a race bike on the Canyon website, but it is more of a I think a climbing and all-round bike. And depending on what position you're used to, I think this could be a pretty good endurance bike as well, or I'm hoping anyway. So that is what I picked up. This is second hand. Now I bought this as a frame set with group set so everything you see here just without the wheels and I'm just making sure Liz isn't watching I paid £1,600 for all of that so really quite happy with that these wheels came on my Canyon Grizzle so I just these haven't cost me anything in addition to the bike I've already bought uh, so I think this is quite a good value but let me talk you through the spec what's on it and why I think it's good for me the frame set I've already covered but the reason I tend to stick to Canyon is because I really like how the geometry works for me and how between the bikes they're quite consistent that I get on this and I get on my Grizzle and I get on my Endure so and although they're slightly different, they're not million miles out. So if you get the same size, the, you know, the reach is very similar. You're not flitting between different brands where you're like, oh, this is a large and it's out here and this is a large and it's back here. So I find like it's pretty consistent and it's easy for me to pick the right one and ride the right one. It is a full carbon frame and it is their lower spec carbon frame. It's the CFSL. Now I do have a CFSL Enduro Ace and my Aero is the SLX and they feel so different as a bike. I'm not so sure that I'd actually tell the difference between the carbon layups. I think if you're a high performance cyclist, maybe you do feel the difference so if you're super light or if you're putting out loads of power but I'm neither of those things so I don't think is a problem I have the the base spec carbon frame on here they're very good as a base spec and um, yeah I certainly really enjoy the feel of riding them the group set on this bike is the SRAM Rival ETAP 2x Now I wanted this because I wanted a big range. I live in Derbyshire, it's very hilly, I don't climb the best. I want to have a, you know, those low gears to get up the hills and then those big gears to go down the false flats and down the hills when required. So this is brilliant. It's got a 4835 chain set and a 1030 rear cassette. I might change the cassette out for a bigger one, but to be honest, 3530 is, is quite a decent range. I have Shimano on the Enduro, so that's got 3630. So I'm already getting a little bit more gear up the hills with this. I have sometimes like shied away from SRAM 12 speed because you see people talk about drivetrain wise it's not the fastest and that 10 tooth that 10 tooth sprocket isn't very efficient and I understand all of that but for a training bike I don't think that really matters I just want that big range that usability of the, for the components to not cost an arm and a leg to replace. The chain set does also have a quark sim, single sided power meter which is great I mean I've used dual side power meters for years now mainly pedals so I know normally like side towards them but it is a bit of a faff sometimes swapping pedals between bikes so knowing that this has got a power meter on it I'm sure Quark is going to be pretty consistent with all the other market leaders they all pretty much are nowadays so I'll be happy using this and it means that I don't have to use like expensive pedals on it in the rubbishy winter and so on. Onto the wheels now I've already said I got these off of my Grizzles these came as standard with my gravel bike they're not super fast road wheels they're not super light they are the DT Swiss G 1800s uh, they're aluminium they do make a nice free hub sound but other than that they're pretty much just, just bog standard wheels but that's all I want. I have paired them with the Continental GP5000 all season tyres. These are great for all seasons as the name dictates. There's actually quite a lot of clearance left even with 32s on this bike so I cannot wait to get on it and feel the comfort of running those lower pressures and using these 
wider tyres. I think for a training bike, I've come from riding on 25s on the road. This is a, a night and day difference when I've ridden this on the gravel bike. So looking forward to seeing how it feels on the road bike. Uh, 160 mil rotors front and rear, probably overkill for a road bike, but it's just easier to swap wheels in and out when I've got 160s on everything. I am thinking about swapping the calipers for an aftermarket brand. I'm going to think about that over the next couple of weeks, but um, just, you just don't always hear great things about SRAM calipers when you use them day in, day out. Some people have great experiences, some don't, but I'm just going to see how they go, I think, but perhaps swap them out while this bike is going to be in bits. So that brings me on to the two big changes that I'm going to make to this bike, and they are quite big. Change number one is the cockpit. Now, the H36 Canyon cockpit does look great, and it is semi-integrated, so it is okay to travel with. So the hoses do run inside the handlebars so a section, but you can remove like a little panel and essentially change the bars without bleeding the brakes, so I understand. And they look great, and they feel great, and I have this on the aero, and it's fine. But on my training bike, I clip lights on, I clip, air, clip on aero bars on, I love it for that. This does not enable me to do those things. There is only ever, ever so often like some clip on bars come up specific for the H36 cockpit. Canyon sold them years ago. There were some on Facebook a few weeks ago and I tried to buy them, but the guy sold them to somebody else. So until I'm able to get some clip on bars for a H36 cockpit, which seems like trying to get rocking horse poo, I am gonna swap these bars out for just a standard conventional stem and bar, probably the ones off my uh, Enduro Ace, in fact, just because I think that will enable me to use it for actual training better. So it might be a crime against aesthetics of cycling, but for me, it is exactly what I need to do. And the second thing, and the bigger thing, is the color. Now, if you follow this channel for a while, you do know that I'm a fan of blue bikes, and I'm not actually a massive fan of red. Now, now I've got this in the flesh, I do actually like, I won't say love it, but I do like it. However, I do have this bike booked in for a respray, so I am gonna follow through with that and have it painted another color. I'm thinking it will be some sort of variation of blue, but I'm not exactly sure what yet. I do quite like having different colors on bikes in terms of different shades or different things, and uh, there's quite a lot of those like flip colors knocking around nowadays, so I might try and go for one of those. So what do you think, Rupert? Sort of like a bluey purple, how about that? So yeah, that's the plan. I mean, I'm gonna also think about whether I have these top stripes sprayed back on or not, I don't really know, but we will see. I need to strip this down now, get it in bits and take it off to the paint shop. But that in a nutshell is my Canyon Ultimate CFSL. But if I've bought the wrong bike, please do let me know. Should I have bought something with a, a specialized label on it or something? I don't really know, but I'm looking forward to getting out on this and hoping it's gonna be done in the next three to four weeks so I can get out training on it and uh, yeah, get some miles in it and let you know what I think to the ultimate but yeah certainly on paper ticks all the boxes for me